Hey folks, uh, for this discussion, we're going to talk uh, about rotational work and energy. And um, good news is some of this is very similar to translational uh, work and energy. So, for instance, in a translational system, and I'll spell it out for you. So in a translational system, the work done by a force is F dot delta x if the force is constant. Power is the derivative of work with respect to time or force dot velocity. Okay. And kinetic energy, and I'm going to put a little t there from now on, translational, is one half m v squared. Well, rotational has analogous equations. So the work done in rotational, and I'll put a little r for that, is instead of force, we have torque. Instead of delta x, we have delta theta, right? Power is still dw dt, but now instead of force times velocity, it is torque dot omega. And finally, kinetic energy rotational, instead of being one half m v squared, it's one half i omega squared. So the good news is the equations are similar if you just know what to substitute for. So anywhere in a, a translational equation, if you saw force, well, you'd sub in a torque. If you saw x, you'd sub in a theta. If you saw, saw v, you'd sub in an, an omega. So if you know what to plug in, it's pretty easy to remember. Now, um, I've got a couple examples for you, uh, and um, none of these are going to require calculators, so we're going to do this all variable, okay? So, first example, let's say that you have a meter stick or a rod, just a uniform rod, and it's pivoted at its end, okay? And the rod has a length L and a mass M, and you've got a pin in the end, and you're going you're gonna to let it go, okay? So, it's going to swing toward the vertical. So let's say it gets to vertical, okay? And it's now it's moving rapidly through the, the vertical at this moment. So the question is, what is the, um, well, several questions. What is omega there, okay? So what is, what is the angular velocity at that point? What is the velocity of, at the tip of the rod? And what's the velocity of the center of mass of the rod at that point, okay? So um, there's a couple ways you can solve this. You could use kinematics and dynamics. Um, and with my classes, I will share like what that would look like. Um, it turns out that it's kind of complicated. You, you can do it, but it's really hard. Um, the reason it's hard is because as this thing swings, it's alpha angular acceleration changes, it decreases. So we, for instance, we can't use any of our constant acceleration or constant alpha equations. So it turns out you have to do a little calculus if you want to use dynamics and kinematics. Um, but if you use energy, it's really quite simple. Okay, when the bar started, it had potential energy, it had a height. At the bottom of the swing, that's going to turn into rotational kinetic energy because it's pivoted, okay? Now, um, the double here is in the details. You have to be careful, okay? So we got gravitational potential energy turning into uh, rotational. So we've got mgh equals one-half i omega squared, okay? Well, what's h? Well, when you do h, it's always the center of mass, how far did the center of mass fall? Well, our center of mass started here and ended there. Well, that's L over two, okay? That's half the length of the bar. That's how far that fell, okay? So um, in this equation, you would have mg L over two equals one half. Now for a moment of inertia of a bar about its end, that is one third ML squared and then omega squared. Uh, good news is some stuff cancels, so like one of the L's goes away, 
the mass of the bar drops out. It doesn't matter if it's wood or lead or whatever. Um, and you even get a half to cancel out here and here. And so we get uh, G equals L over 3 omega squared. And omega equals the square root of 3G over L. Okay, and then, so notice the only thing that matters there is L uh, as far as the bar goes. Uh, the bigger the L, the slower it's going to be going when it gets to the bottom. Okay, now as far as these velocities go, that's also relatively easy. Okay. Um, once you have that omega, finding the velocity is uh, pretty simple. What's the relationship between omega and velocity? Well, before I ask that, remember the omega for the bar is the same everywhere along the bar. Each, like when the, when the bar gets to the bottom here, each part of the bar is going the same angular velocity. But different parts of the bar are going different linear velocities. So for the end of the bar, the tip of the bar, um, for any tangential velocity, all we do is take r omega. What's the radius from the pivot to the tip? Well, that's L over L or L. And then we multiply that by omega, which is root 3g over L. Okay, and you, know, you end up with 3gl in the, uh, in the uh, square root there. How about the velocity of the center of mass? Well, the same equation, except for now, how far is it from the pivot? To your center of mass, well, that's L over 2. So you'd have L over 2 square root of 3g over L. And this would become, um, you can probably leave the, the half outside there. So you'd have a half root um, 3gl. Okay. Uh, so it'd be similar, but it'd be half the speed because you're half, you had half the radius. Okay. So there you go. Uh, now, I do have one more example. Um, it's similar to this one. And here's the deal. What if I asked you two questions? What if I t put the pivot somewhere else? And what if I didn't want to, I wanted to find how fast the bar was going at some angle, not, not when it's all the way vertical, okay? Well, the good news is the process is very similar. The bad news is there's a lot more detail to worry about. So let's draw that out. Let's say you got a bar and it's pivoted eh, somewhere about there. And then we want to know how fast is that bar going when it gets, when it's dropped some angle theta from the horizontal, okay? Now, let's go ahead and call this pivot distance. We'll call that L over six. So we've got the bar pivoted, you know, one sixth the length from the edge of the bar, okay? And what I want to find here is I want to find omega at that point, and the velocity of the end of the rod at that point, okay? Well, we're still going to use conservation of energy. It's still mgh equals one-half i omega squared, okay? So that's, that hasn't changed at all. The difference is h and i are going to be radically different here. Let's start with h, okay? So again, we want to know how far the center of mass dropped. So here was the center of mass before. Here's the center of mass at our point now. So we want to know that height, okay? So I draw myself a little right triangle. Uh, this is theta right in there, okay? So that height is going to be, well, what's the distance from the pivot to the center of mass? Well, from the end of the bar, it's L over 2. I'm going to subtract L over 6 from that to get the pivot to the center of mass. So it's uh, 3 over 3L three over 6 minus 1L over 6. So it's 2L over 6 or L over 3. So you have to do a little work to figure out, well, what height uh, did the thing drop? Oh, that would be if it went all the way to the bottom. This is now sine theta because it's not this is L over 3. This is L over 3 sine theta. Okay. Now, how about I? Well, for this, we have to use parallel axis theorem. So that's ICM plus M DCM squared. So I would be, for the center of mass of a bar, we got 1 12th ML squared plus M. The distance we just found, it's L over 3. That's from the center of mass to the pivot, and we have to square that. Okay, And we get, uh, we get ML squared and then times a 12th. Uh, plus a uh, ninth, okay? Uh, I got to get common denominators. This would be 3 over 36 and 4 over 36. So this would be 7 over 36 
ml squared. So that's I. Um, now we can answer our question. What's the angular velocity of the bar at that moment? So we got mg. The height we figured out was L over 3 sine of theta. And that equals 1 half I, which is 7 over 36 ml squared times omega squared. Okay. Uh, again, some stuff cancels. One of the masses drops out, uh, or the mass drops out. One of the L's drops out. And you can even cancel this 3 and make this a 12 if you like. So here I get G sine of theta. Um, this would this become 7 over 24 L omega squared. And if you solve for omega, you get the square root of 24 G sine theta over 7 L. So that would be your omega at that moment. Okay. And then to find the velocity of the end of the bar, you take R omega. The radius, now here you got to be careful again. How far is the radius from the pivot to the end? Well, it's L minus L over 6, or 5 6 L. Okay. So our radius in this case is 5 6 L square root of, and then the whole omega thing, 24 G sine theta over 7 L. And yeah, we can just leave it that way. If you want, you could put the L in there and you can do a little, little uh, math in there, but this is okay to leave the answer this way. So again, the, you're, when you're doing conservation of energy here for rotation, it, the details are the important part. Um, in, or at least a very important part. You have to think about what height did the center of mass drop, okay? What's the distance from the pivot to the center of mass? Um, and then for this last part, what's the distance, the radius, from the pivot to the end of the bar? Okay, so the details are what you really want to be careful of. So I hope that was helpful, and uh, thank you very much.